I look, I like to think about stem density, but at the bottom, like they can run around and all this stuff. But it's high enough to where avian predators can't really see them in there. So for them, particularly for the birds down here, they like to scatter around and scoot and stuff like that before they get up. They like to basically make, your, make it as hard as possible to get to them, but have something for escape cover for them basically to fly out one direction. Get out, get out, get out. Right here, right here, right here. But you saw how they flushed though, right? And they all went in them trees. Look at that. That was the cubby. And it might be more over there. Let's keep going. That's the birds. I'm blaming this on my superstition. The birds move different down here because of the red clay. That's what Neil told me. It's something in the dirt. And because of that, the birds fly. I don't know if they fly faster, they get up harder, whatever it is, it's enough to get you out your pants when those birds get up. These birds ain't playing around. And they track those birds too. They were running like that. Um, they track them birds. <laughs> you gonna have good days or you, <laughs> you gonna have bad days. You gonna get skunked, you gonna have one covey. There's days that I found five or six coveys on certain grounds. But at the end of the day, you still got to go and get it. I'm born and raised in Atlanta. I do not make no excuses for myself. You got to put the gas in your car, uh, buy the essentials. You don't need a whole lot of, you don't need a whole lot of stuff to train a dog. You need birds. Spend your money in gas, spend your money in time and patience with your dog. And I mean, be willing to do what you got to do to get on those birds. Also, get a mentor. Get somebody that knows better than you. And it, it, they don't necessarily have to hunt public land all the time, but you need to get somebody that knows habitat. You need to get somebody that knows how those birds act at nine o'clock in the morning, how they act at 12 o'clock in the middle of the day, and how them birds act when the sun is going down and they're trying to feed. Um, you've got to study, but don't make excuses for yourself. You're gonna have a whole, your, my first year, for example, I, I can count on one hand how many wild birds I shot when I decided to make an exclusive pursuit on wild birds. You know, um, don't get discouraged. That's just what it is. Um, if you got a new dog, trying to, you trying to put your dog on public land birds, be okay with them knocking and, and messing up. They gotta learn. But you as a handler have to be patient and persistent. Um, anything, anything less than patience and persistence, you will not be successful. And don't let folks tell you that there are no birds here in Georgia. Um, you know, I'm not gonna tell you where they are, <laughs> but they're here and you can get on them. Um, and I think you just need to temper your expectations. Yeah. Let me get my mask, Neil. Yes. Started in 19. For the 16. Man. And I'm one of the lucky ones to be in the <laughs> book three times. <laughs> You've been in this book three times? Yeah, I'm in that three times. For getting beat by Joe Fraser? No. <laughs> Winning, losing, and then. Um, so I just gotta get, I gotta get my wins up. This is what the book is all about. His, um, some of the best dogs. Mm-hmm. Only a few of us got in this book. 
because y'all had the best times. <laughs> Just so, so you, you bragging at what she's saying? Because she was in that book. I was in this book. <laughs> it was uh, gave to me by Charlie Chapin the year I won the trial. That's all cool. good. They got my dogs in the national. My worked at Nilo when he was living. Did you? Uh -huh. I didn't know that. Yeah. So Terry in good hands then. Yeah, it's a good place. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So I'm gonna let you take it and go through it. Well, I'm gonna make sure I take care of it. Okay. I appreciate it, and I will make sure I get this back in the same condition you gave it to me. Um, you got Deacon, Tommy Rice, big, big Tommy. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. First of all, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I didn't say thank you enough because I this you can't even get this book anywhere. Well, you got one of 550 copies apparently, so it ain't that many. Right. I'm gonna say I beat you. That way, that way I can get my credit if I don't beat you the next year's. Where uh, where are y'all hunting at? Over on Elson, Tyler Place. Oh man, We're over there with uh, well I ain't gonna open your kennel. I ain't gonna open your kennel. I'm gonna start with the gentleman that honestly made me want pointers, Neil Carter. You know, he's the guy that I found his image in a, in a, in a magazine, in, in Garden Gun Magazine, him and Curtis. And, and I had my lab right then, and, and I didn't know nothing about bird dogs. All I, all I did was, you know, get out and do the best that I could. But when I met Neil, Neil was the one that opened my eyes to the difference between, you know, hunting with a bird dog and the art of bird dogs. There's a significant difference in, you know, what it means to see a dog stacked up high and tight. What it means to know how to switch up your hand. You know, what it means to gauge the pressure. When, it, when, when to, you know, ease up with a dog. When to say when and when to put the dog up. You know, when to, 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 to stop training. Bird dogs is an art, and Neil Carter showed me that the first day I met him. <laughs> okay, okay. You'll get a fair chance. I'm a, I know I'm going to get a fair you, chance. You've come a long way. And, I, and I, I, well, I appreciate it. You have come a long way since the time I met you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Now, that does mean a lot. Yeah. All, all mess and aside. I want you to continue to climb the hill. Okay. I'll help you with anything I can help you with. All right. I'm going to take it. Okay. And then I'm going to take the trophy. Then you're going to try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Throw them up here with that same little tractor. Yeah. Right up there. I was gonna say you built this entire place. We did, and uh, we went and looked at a lot of places. I mean, a lot of kennels. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Charlie Chapin had a kennel similar with the barrels, mm -hmm. but he had them on pedestals. Okay. But um, so they weren't hanging like that. They weren't hanging. I I decided that would work. Yeah. And they come with a bung in them, whiskey barrels too. You see it? Yeah. I think it's cheaper than tractor supply stuff. It might be cheaper. It might be. Yeah. Terry Senior got me hip to understanding how connected everything is down here, and and the importance of relationships. You know, everything down here in Thomasville is 1,000% based on the, the relationships with the people that have come before you. Neil goes back to his grandfather and his uncles. They were the ones that brought him in. They were also the gentlemen that were told, just like I want to tell everybody else, that once you get the art down, you need to be trying to teach somebody else that. You need to be doing your due diligence for the next generation. That's Melrose. That's an older youth. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the old kid. Yeah. 
I think your son just texted me. What he said? He probably threw. He up. said we. Vegas. Yeah, he is. Fetch, Vegas. Fetch him up. Good dog. Good dog. And who said pointers don't uh retrieve? Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Good dog. Good dog. That's a nice looking bird, man. I want to be, you know, I want to be in the winner's circle at some point in time. I would like, and whether that be in the winner's circle in American field, or whether that be in the winner's circle at the Black Handlers trial. And particularly, my interest is, is more in the winner's circle in the Black Handlers trial, because it, it, it is a part of my culture. It's, it's, it is the history but I'm still having a good time with the same folks all around Thomasville that, that I come down here and, and work dogs with. Everybody comes to everybody's trial down here. Everybody is supportive. The owners come to the Black Handlers trial and, 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 and the, the Black Handlers trial go to the owners trial. They go to the Handlers trial. Everybody works together. And that is the thing that needs to be discussed considering all the times considering the fact that our country is heavily divided the last thing that you would think about this about south georgia considering its history you would think that more of us would be div divided you would think that bird dogs don't care about no color they just don't care about right they don't care, they care about birds and that there's the common denominator those are the things that when you get in the field, whatever was going on on the news, that don't matter right now. Whatever you had going on at home, that don't matter right now. The South is spiritual, man. I grew up Southern Baptist. I'm Methodist now, but I grew up Southern Baptist. And there's that call and response nature in the pulpit. You know, you sit there in the sanctuary, man, in the and, and you got the choir going here. You got the preacher hyping them up over here. All right. And you got you got everybody in the pews over here getting to it. That's God in the sanctuary, man. Like everybody getting amped up and going, and, and, and it's a good time. That's the same thing in the, in the quail woods. You know, that's the same thing at a field trial, particularly the black handlers. You're gonna hear folks talking. <laughs> You're gonna hear folks talking. It's that call and response. I don't like that leg up, but